Hey guys, thanks for coming back to my channel. And uh, I'm in a good mood. We've got some really, really great 80 degree weather outside today. Such a relief for um, people here in Oklahoma. And I know I'm probably preaching to the choir. I know a lot of people are dealing with hot weather this time of year, so it's, it's nothing new. Um, but 80 degrees outside right now for us in, in late August, um, that's a little bit unheard of. I and mean, it's not going to last or anything, but I've got great weather going on. Um, I've kind of sat on this haul a little bit. It's a Goose Creek Fall and Halloween candle haul. Um, I figure I might as well film it and get it over with because the longer I waited, the more disinterested I was with it. And I'll be honest, I'm a little bit goose creaked out right now, guys. Um, and I kind of get the feeling that a lot of people are uh, that follow my channel. And I think a lot of people just kind of want me to move on from Goose Creek a little bit. And you're going to get your wish. I think I'm done with Goose Creek, at least for the foreseeable future right now. And as far as that goes, I just mean hauling their candles and wax right now on my channel. Of course, I'm going to burn their candles and still give updates. I just kind of wanted to get this one out of the way. I was not feeling this haul at all. And it's going to start with their Halloween candles. We've got a lot to talk about. I'm just going to kind of run down what I have here. Uh, this is not going to be your usual haul. I've got a lot to say. And I know there's a lot of people thinking this and feeling this way. But I don't think there's going to be too many people willing to say it, at least here on YouTube. And to be honest, I don't feel like there's a lot of people even, you know, interested enough in Goose Creek to say it. So it is going to have to do with PR and I'm going to go in on it a little bit because that's what I do. You guys can always count on me to keep it 100 for you. So let's get into these. I'm just going to kind of run down everything first and let you know what I have. And then we're just going to kind of start the discussion with these Halloween candles. This one right here, which I was really, really looking forward to, um, Black Licorice Cupcake. That's the first one that I have here. Uh, of course, we have Tried and True Trick or Treat. This pains me to show you this one, but you know, you guys know how much I love the actual fragrance on that one. Another classic along with Trick or Treat is this one right here, which is Cauldron. This one right here, Sugared Apple Granola. And the next one from their Scooby-Doo collection, um, this one right here, Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns. That's a cute label, I like that. This one right here, uh, we got Maple Orchard. And then this one right here, Fall Festival. I know you guys are reading everything backwards here. I, I know, I I'm aware of that, just wanna let you know. Um, it has something to do with my iPhone settings, I have not fixed that. And then one of their classic, uh, classic, fragrances uh, for fall. It's been around forever pumpkin pie. And then we have three more Halloween collection candles. This one right here, Campfire Tells. I love these labels. These are very reminiscent to me, at least, of something like um, McDonald's Happy Mills from the 80s, the Halloween buckets. This one right here, that's candy corn. Love it. Love that style right there huge fan of this specific part of the Halloween collection. And this one right here, pumpkin carving. Those were hit out of the ballpark. Those are done very well. Uh, very fitting for the season, of course. And I mean, I don't know that we've really seen anything quite like this before as far as a label for a candle company. But having said that, yeah, let's get into the ones that are really bad. We'll start off with those first. Just kind of get them out of the way. And it's this one right here. It's Black Licorice Cupcake. I mean, this was poorly executed from top to bottom. Um, with the label, starting with the label, yeah. And the fragrance itself, poorly executed. Now, like I said, I've sat on this haul for a while. I've smelled these before now. These are not first impressions. I had no real interest in talking about them, is really the short and long of it. <laughs> Black Licorice Cupcake. I don't know the exact notes on this one. I'm going to assume there's something along the lines of Star Anise or Black Licorice, uh, Cupcake, Vanilla, something along those lines. And I, just as far as the fragrance goes, I don't know what happened here. I was so excited for this fragrance. and. Uh, black licorice uh, plus a cupcake. You guys know that I love my black licorice candles. Uh, fragrance. I've kind of been known as the black licorice guy over the years in the candle community. 
but it's not even just specific to uh, black licorice candles. I love it in personal fragrance as well, that note. Um, black licorice in personal fragrance. And I actually love to eat black licorice. So, you know, I hear people all the time say that they can't stand black licorice. Well, that doesn't make you special or anything. I think most people don't like it. That's, you're not the anomaly. People like me are probably the anomaly where it's one of my favorite types of candy. It's even something that I've kind of passed down with my kids because they love it too. And it just comes from the fact that I eat it so much and I like to eat it right around this time of year. Black licorice star anise, it just kind of reminds me of the season, Halloween season. It has a very kind of gothic, spooky smell to it. Um, this one right here, though, I just, I don't know what went wrong. I don't, I don't know what exactly I'm smelling here. It smells like a very woodsy fragrance, first and foremost. There is some type of either sandalwood or cedar or woodsy note in this. And it's a dominant note too, but I do kind of pick up a little bit of black licorice. Oh boy, I just, I, I don't, I don't know what happened here. And I'm just going to tell you, it's, it's not terrible by any means, but if you're going based off of the name black licorice cupcake, yeah, it's not real good. And it's certainly no black magic from Homeworks, which honestly is the ultimate black licorice candle. If you're just wanting a straight, sugary, sweet black licorice, that's what black magic is. There's nothing real spooky about it or dark about it. Like I can say for this candle right here from the same candle company, Goose Creek, that we're talking about, which is Cauldron. And it's also a black licorice and it's a darker take on black licorice. Very dark patchouli, dark woods. Uh, along with this one right here from Yankee Candle, Black Magic. It's it's none of those. It doesn't smell like any of them, and it just doesn't have the appeal of any of them. This was a, this is a real winner from Yankee Candle. Probably their best black licorice that they've ever done. It does have that spooky aspect to it. That very dark, almost again, we're dealing with patchouli and dark woods and maybe even a little bit of a smokiness with that one. And again, Black Magic from Homeworks, the ultimate as far as black licorice candy candles. So guys, yeah, this black licorice cupcake, it just, they do a lot of cupcake fragrances. They do a lot of cake pop fragrances. They do a lot of like angel food and bunk cakes. And where is that note? Where's that sweet vanilla, cakey note guys it should be in this candle should it not black licorice cupcake you would think it would be in this candle the label on this is a completely different thing though um number one i feel like that label is a little bit too dark like the things on it the bat the black rose it doesn't pop or anything um and I know we're kind of looking at it here in bad lighting. It, it, everything about the label is too dark though. There needs to be some aspect about, I would assume the rose and the bat would pop from here. It needs to be, it can't be the same density as the background here on the label. So they don't really stand out unless you're looking at the label close like this, you probably wouldn't really even be able to decipher what you're looking at here. And that leads me to my next point. Why a bat? Why a black rose for a black licorice cupcake? I mean, couldn't you have got a little more creative, uh, a little more, and just kept it simple? I guess getting creative and keeping it simple at the same time. It just put a blacked out cupcake with blacked out icing on it, maybe a little sprig of star anise, something like that. Um, I just don't understand why there's a black rose on a black licorice cupcake candle and a bat that really has nothing to do with the fragrance itself. It's almost like there was a disconnect between the guy that made the labels and the people that made the fragrances. Cause on a lot of the Halloween collection stuff, it's kind of like they said, okay, just go ahead and make us a certain amount of Halloween labels. We'll decide which ones fit, which fragrances we will handle that part of it. You don't even need to know what they're called. 
we'll just kind of go through what you give us and put them on the ones that we feel are the closest to them. Yeah, it just kind of feels like something Bath & Body Works would do where the name and, and the label and the fragrance have nothing to do with each other at all. Um, poorly executed from top to bottom, black licorice cupcake. Next one we have is an all time classic. Um, it's this one right here, it's Witch's Cauldron. And again, the label, I just, yeah, we've got a crow. We've got roses again. And what that has to do with Witch's Cauldron don't ask me. This right here, though. This is Witch's Cauldron. This is a Witch's Cauldron. It's exactly what it is. That's funny. They decided to put a Witch's Cauldron with all kinds of, like, goo and smoke and, you know, what you would expect on a candle called Witch's Cauldron. Imagine that. I mean, the brain's behind some of this stuff. But this one right here... Okay, they didn't change the fragrance at all. Same great thing, um, same dark black licorice. Yeah, definitely an acquired taste, I would say. Um, if you're not a fan of black licorice or dark and kind of ominous fragrances, yeah, you're not gonna like this, but this right here is just a huge turnoff for me. Taking what is a perfectly fine label and matches the name of the candle and then somehow getting to this. I don't know. And the last one from that part of the Halloween collection that we're going to talk about is the biggest disappointment of the three. And it, as disappointing as those were, yeah, this was quite a bit more disappointing. Trick or treat, guys. Trick or treat. What? Look what has happened to the trick or treat label. Okay, Goose Creek. This is a Goose Creek problem. I'm not even going to blame the guy that made the labels. They signed off on it. Ultimately, it was their decision. Here's Trick or Treat. This is Trick or Treat. This is what it should look like. This is the label that's been on this candle since its inception. And you can see it's right here on the large two wicks, which is what it started out with, just on a little bit smaller scale or larger, depending on how you want to look at it larger vertically there, but this one being the wraparound label, you can kind of see, goes all the way around. Look, it's got the kids on there, trick or treating. Looks like they're running from one house to another, what looks to be a field, but perfect. I mean, and I know somebody's gonna say, well, that's just a stock image. You know, you can probably find that online maybe. Okay, but that was Trick or Treat's stock image. It's arguably their most iconic label that they've ever made. Everybody knows this candle based on that label. And now, once it's been in the three wicks, this label. But this is what we have now. Still a great fragrance, still the same. If anybody were ever to ask me how to describe this fragrance, and I've recommended this, I've put this in an October recommendations video, I think everybody just kind of thinks of it as the ultimate Halloween candle from Goose Creek. And a lot of people like myself think of it as an October fragrance, but based on the actual fragrance itself, take the name away, the label away, the old label, and tell me what the fragrance itself smells like it's actually a September fragrance. It's an apple bakery. And I've never really kind of bothered to look at the notes of Trick or Treat. Um, no, 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 I'm gonna, no. I've never even bothered to look at the notes of Trick or Treat, but I did decide to here recently once I started to look at it and kind of dissect it a little bit more. It does have the note of apple cider. It does have the note of apple. Um, it's got a graham cracker note. That kind of right there um, tells me, to, to myself, it tells me why I've really been drawn to this candle over the years. You guys know I'm a huge apple cider fan. And, and that really kind of just sums up this candle. But while it says it does have the note of graham cracker listed, I don't really feel any graham cracker here. To me, I get like a bakery, an apple muffin, or even an apple cupcake to some degree. 
maybe even a little bit of a caramelized sweetness to it as well. It's unmistakable, an apple bakery. And one of the great things about this candle over the years is it's always been a really strong performer. So it always leaves a really lasting memory, a very strong impression. And this candle right here is absolutely amazing. What they chose to do with the label is equally amazing. And I don't understand it, Goose Creek. Now I'm gonna probably rant a little bit about this, about the whole idea behind this, okay? And it has to do with PR, and it's that simple. And it has to do with, we're gonna change some of the most iconic labels that we've ever had from our Halloween collection, all in the name of collaboration with a large YouTuber. And that sums it up, guys. That sums up the world that we're in now here on YouTube and on social media with candles. And you guys can complain all you want about ambassadors from Kringle, um, the oversaturation that people like to say with Homeworks. But the only one that truly bothers me is the PR with Goose Creek. It's the only one that just doesn't fit. It's the only one that feels forced. It feels fake. Um, and I hope you guys aren't buying it because, and it's not just with this guy that's, that's handling PR right now. It's not with anybody that's handling PR right now. This goes back years now with people and Goose Creek's choices of collaboration with people that, you know, don't like their candles and have actively trashed Goose Creek candles and their CEO publicly on their channels, on social media and then come back around and start to receive PR and then are now interested and love the candle company. I can handle the ambassadors with Kringle, guys. I can handle those. Th that's not a big deal to me. A lot of these people with Kringle, the ambassadors, have liked Kringle for years from the get-go. Have liked Homeworks for years since they were released. Those don't bother me at all. It's these guys overnight that get with Goose Creek that don't really even acknowledge they exist and in some cases completely bash the candles and the company any chance they get to then suddenly liking them and proclaiming how much better they are than Bath and Body Works at times. Um, it, there's a bias now with Goose Creek and it just doesn't add up. You can even say the bias is as small as somebody now starting to feature their candles on their channel when before PR, they wouldn't talk about them really at all. That's the bias I'm talking about. It's a bias nonetheless. It could be something as small as that and it's still a bias though. And I don't think people are buying it. I'm certainly not buying what you're selling, which is funny to say because I buy Goose Creek candles. I love their candles. I recommend a lot of their candles to people. But what these PR channels are bringing to me and bringing to you guys too, my viewers are smart. They understand. They pick up on this stuff. I know you guys notice this. I know I'm not the only one that notices it. I know Goose Creek has a very passionate fan base. I know people that have been with Goose Creek for a long time are going to dislike things like this. And hey, it's all in the name of PR now. It's all in the name of hooking up with a, a guy here or there, a, a social media presence that either has hated you in the past or shown mild disinterest in your candles and has considered them cheap smelling compared to Bath and Body Works and are now featuring them on their channel and just think that they are um, worthy of being able to talk about them just simply because you received them for free. Or in the case of what we've got going on now, you're working with the company. I saw this YouTuber referring to himself and Goose Creek as we. So one of the current PR people that are making the labels for Goose Creek now, that is a prominent channel on YouTube, is now referring to himself and Goose Creek as one. If you watch one of his videos, his recent hauls, he refers to himself and Goose Creek as we. So he is now part of the creative process with items I'm reviewing on my channel. I think it's been said that you have to be happy for the guy 
or you're just a hater, I guess, but no, this doesn't make me happy. Nothing about this makes me happy. And I'm not hating on the guy, like I said, I, I love some of these labels on some of these other candles, but no, this just stinks, guys. This is the bad part of PR. This is the bad part of uh, the candle world, the social media, uh, the push that you're starting to get. You're getting it shoved down your throat and you're just expected to believe that overnight these people suddenly care about these candles. And it never adds up, guys. And it, I, like I said, I can deal with Kringle. I can deal with homeworks. Th those make sense. The PR collaborations with Goose Creek make no sense. None at all. It's like one of those Hollywood marriages where it's just like, I know you two don't like each other. It's just, you know, scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. It's the $100 handshakes under the table. It's the money shoulder rubs. That's what we've got going on now. It feels slimy. It feels um, cheapened. Like these candles are not worth our time unless you're going to give them to us for free. And I know Goose Creek is okay with that. They just want the bottom line. They want their candles talked about. You can basically say anything you want to about their CEO, and he's going to give you free stuff. I feel sorry for you guys, the guys that are like me that have been with Goose Creek for a long time. If you're new to their candle company, you probably might not care about some of these changes. But this label for this candle now is nonsense. Um, this should have never been changed. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing needed to be changed with this. It fits the vibe perfectly. One of the reasons I love this label so much for this candle, it reminds me a little bit of the movie Halloween Tree. Um, the Halloween Tree, if you've ever seen it, it's a 90s uh, Halloween cartoon classic movie. It kind of gives me that feel with this label. Uh, if you have not seen The Halloween Tree, this is a good time to plug it. Go watch that movie. It's a 90s movie. It kind of has that feel set in that time um, of its era, that time. It, it kind of reminds me a little bit. As a matter of fact, I think the, the makers of Scooby-Doo made that movie. It's not as goofy as Scooby-Doo. It's not as 70s-ish. It doesn't have the, you know, the over-the-top kind of goofiness. It's an actual what it was like to grow up and go trick-or-treating in the 90s. And that's what this label reminds me of. It's very nostalgic for me. This did not need to be changed, Goose Creek. So I'm not going to harp on the guy that did it. He was offered a job and he accepted it. Okay. This is a Goose Creek problem. If you guys think that we have issues with your labels and that's what you think needs to be changed, you're tone deaf. You don't get it. This doesn't need to be changed, it never did. So boy, I really don't want this video to be too long. I'm gonna edit it down and get it to where I want it. Uh, pumpkin carving is really nice. I hate that I had to go off on this and talk about it. Trust me guys, nobody else here on YouTube is gonna talk about this. Nobody else is gonna give this any attention. I'm the only person that's gonna dare broach this subject and I feel like it needed to be talked about. I get people talking about PR all the time, but Goose Creek always seems to do it the worst. There's always seems to be like, what? That makes no sense. Back to the candles. I mean, I love this label. Well done, well done. I'm gonna give you a pat on the back for this one. Pumpkin carving. It's a syrupy sweet pumpkin apple. It's really nice. I've smelled something like this in uh, retail wax from, I think, I wanna say Better Homes and Gardens before. It's very straight. I kind of get that fresh apple, that fresh juicy apple. It kind of reminds me of a Homeworks fragrance called, what was it? Was it pumpkin apple pie or apple pumpkin pie? Something along those lines. That's a winner. I don't know that the fragrance itself fits this. It's not as egregious as, you know, the black licorice cupcake. I'm gonna let this slide on this one. That's adorable. Of course, you got candy corn here too. This was a, a tried and true classic. Uh, I still say this is the best candy corn fragrance currently in production. And I don't know why people always wanna pigeonhole candy corn as smelling specifically like vanilla and honey. 
it doesn't, it, th that doesn't make sense really. Um, first of all, the smell of candy corn has no smell. There's no smell at all. If you open a bag of candy corn, a fresh bag of candy corn, you put your nose inside, it smells of wax, okay? So we're, then we're gonna go what the taste we would imagine smells like. So, and that's where we have the issue of, uh, that's the problem. There's never really an agreement on the taste of candy corn. To me, again, it's, it tastes waxy. It tastes like wax that's sugary sweet. And that's one reason why there's so much debate on, you know, it's a thing now online is what does candy corn taste like? And you ask 10 people, you'll get 10 different answers. So I don't know why people want to beat into your head and make absolutes about it smelling or tasting like honey and vanilla because there's never been a consensus on that. I think at one time online, there was a taste expert and he equated the taste of candy corn to tasting like brown sugar, like crystallized brown sugar, caramel and marshmallow. There's just a lot of varying opinions as far as the taste goes. That's why you see different vendor wax companies, different candle companies have such a differing take when they do a candy corn fragrance is because it's never one thing. It's always left up for interpretation. What do you interpret the taste to smell like? One of those things. It's heavy vanilla. It's almost like a buttery vanilla, buttercream vanilla. Maybe a dash of honey, a little bit. It's sugary sweet too. But yeah, I've never understood why people want to pigeonhole candy corn to smelling exactly like one thing or another, because it doesn't. So there's candy corn. Adorable label, well done. And we'll talk about this last one, Campfire Tales. Awesome, love it. Um, this one right here, I think a lot of people, th this is not a new fragrance, by the way. This has been around for a while. I smell a little bit of chocolate in this. It's almost like a s'mores, I would say. Like a, a, a light, chocolatey, um, sweet marshmallow. Very, very light amount of smokiness. Don't think Bath & Body Works Marshmallow Fireside, because this is not that. This is a slightly perfumey gourmand s'mores is what I would call it. Light smokiness, campfire tells. And so that's every, I'm just going to kind of touch on in this initial haul video because I've done a lot of ranting. I'm not going to talk about everything else. I don't want this video to be terribly long and it already is going to be. Um, only my true Goose Creek followers will probably watch this video being that it's this long. And I know you guys don't have half an hour to watch a video. I'll touch on a lot of this other stuff whenever I'm burning it, after I burned it in an empties video or a what I'm burning video. Um, I need to take a little bit of a break and back off of candles here because I feel like I'm kind of wearing down with candles. This haul from Goose Creek, and I've said that they're the last company that is doing things right this fall. It's just been a bad fall for candles um, in the home fragrance world. Um, I felt like all candle companies have really struggled. Kringles Hall and burning those candles really put a damper on things for me. Homeworks, kind of that haul and the situation that they never can get things in order really has kind of put a damper for me. Bath & Body Works is struggling to put out new and exciting fragrances. And then we have the issues with Goose Creek and all of this stuff with their labeling and their collaborations. And it's just a bunch of nonsense. And I need to take a break from it for a little bit as far as hauling goes. So you won't see Goose Creek hauls on this channel for a while. Um, I don't know how long that's gonna be. I'll still talk about their candles. You'll still see me update things and how things are going. But yeah, I need to take a little bit of break from that. Appreciate you guys watching. Talk to you soon. See ya.